The law of conservation of mass and energy is one of the most fundamental laws in physics. Think of any particle or system anywhere in the universe, and you will see this principle holds true everywhere perfectly. But at some point in the time in the 20th century, something bizarre was observed, which led a vast community of physicists to believe that the energy conservation law is violated. It was related to beta decay in radioactivity. The problem was so serious that even famous physicist Niels Bohr was ready to abandon the principle of conservation of energy. But what actually happened? Let's jump into it. In the year 1896, French physicist Henri Becquerel discovered radioactivity. For those of you who don't know, radioactivity is a process where nucleus of any atom changes its composition or energy level by emitting some particles in form of strong radiation. Mainly three types of rays are there, alpha, beta and gamma. Alpha particle is composed of two neutrons and two protons, that is a nucleus of a helium atom. Beta particles are of two types, one is beta plus or positron, another is beta minus or electron. They are antiparticles of each other. Beta minus is emitted when a proton converts to a neutron, and beta plus is emitted when a neutron gets converted to a proton. Lastly, we have got gamma ray, which is just electromagnetic radiation of very high frequency. After the discovery of radioactivity, scientists started performing several experiments to determine the energy of emitted particles. When the number density of the emitted particles were plotted against its energy, the alpha particles showed a narrow spike. That means, in case of disintegration of a particular nucleus, all the alpha particles are emitted with the same amount of energy. This is because in alpha decay, one nucleus is giving up two neutrons and two protons. Therefore, its atomic number is decreased by two and mass number is by 4. So energy of alpha particle is simply the difference between rest mass energies of the two nuclei. Similar case is for gamma emission. Its energy is equal to the energy difference of two nuclear energy levels. In beta decay, the same scenario was expected. Because just like alpha decay, here one nucleus turns to another by giving off one electron and hence increasing its atomic number by 1. So the energy of beta particles should be same as the difference between rest mass energies of the two nuclei, right? No, it didn't happen. The experiments showed a plot like this. There are some beta particles with very small energy. Then the number increases and then goes on decreasing to zero. Only a few beta particles have this amount of energy which is maximum. So beta showed continuous spectra. All energies are possible from 0 to maximum value or Emax. What is more interesting is that this maximum energy is same as the difference between the rest mass energies of two nuclei. So this is the only energy we expect to have. But we have actually got a distribution of energies. Say some beta particles have energy equal to this, then where this amount of energy is gone? It was the problem. The experiments were done in 1927, but where the missing energy is gone couldn't be explained even in the next two years. Niels Bohr, the famous scientist, suggested that energy was not conserved or was conserved in the mean. The debate about a possible violation of a fundamental law of physics remained for years. In year 1930, Austrian theoretical physicist Wolfgang Pauli came up with a solution. His idea was simple. He suggested that there is another particle which is emitted along with electron or positron during beta decay process. Maybe this particle is very 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 tiny and non-interacting that we cannot detect it. Maybe the missing energy of our problem is carried by this particle which is emitted alongside beta particles. But it was mere a hypothesis. Pauli himself knew that it don't have any experimental proof, and hence he wrote a letter to some experimental physicists 
addressing them dear radioactive ladies and gentlemen in the letter he proposed his solution by invoking an unknown particle responsible for continuous beta spectrum although he didn't have any evidence he published his paper saying that during beta decay the energy is distributed almost evenly between beta particles and this unknown particle to make beta decay possible this unknown particle must be chargeless it must be very very tiny about 100th of mass of a proton it should be a fermion that is a spin half particle and it should interact very weakly with matter making it very hard to detect all right but what really the particle was well in 1932 physicist enrico fermi named it neutrino which means a little neutral one it was a fundamental particle which came to someone's mind first even before its actual discovery so the main reaction of beta particle is actually this during beta plus decay proton is converted to a neutron positron and a neutrino whereas during beta minus decay a neutron is converted to a proton an electron and an anti neutrino so the missing energy is actually converted to the kinetic energy of the neutrinos or anti neutrinos hence problem solved but not yet from 1930 to 1955 long 25 years people and almost every scientist had believed in pauli's neutrino hypothesis although it didn't have any experimental proof to confirm experimental physicists had tried many ways to detect neutrino but it interacts so weakly with matter that they had failed finally in 1956 frederick rains and clyde kuan detected a neutral spin half and very tiny particle and yeah it was neutrino a newly discovered fundamental particle of lepton family it was two and a half years before pauli's death on receiving the news he replied by telegram thanks for the message everything comes to him who knows how to wait